We're here with Oberon Zell, who's been known as a naturalist amongst many of your the hats that you wear, being a wizard and uh, inventor of words which wind up in the dictionary. Um, you you started your own faith, and you have a, a school of wizardry. There's a number of different things, but one of the things I wanted to ask you about today was was part of that being a naturalist and. Uh, you have a particular relationship with an animal that most people think is is very lowly and uh, and something to be ignored or even a nuisance. And uh, and I'd like you to tell me a little bit about your experiences with possums. All right. Well, I've I've had a number of possums in my life. I actually I seven possums have graced my life as pets over the years. Right now we have a beautiful, sweet little girl possum who we call Blossom. But when I was a kid, my very first possum was one that I named Pogo. And um, I just, I, I used to go out, sneak out of my bedroom window when I was a kid and go running around in the moonlight, you know, and encounter nocturnal animals. And most nocturnal animals have no natural fear of people. So, you know, I would bring home things like owls and bats. And in one case, it was a possum. And I would keep them in my room and and just mm -hmm. make pets of them and stuff. And they were all very easy to do that mm -hmm. with, you know, mm -hmm. once you understood them, which I did. Mm -hmm. But the thing about possums is, and, and people just really, many people don't understand. You've got possum aficionados who, it's, it's a whole world of possum lovers. And I highly recommend going to a website called M.E. Pearl. Mm -hmm. And just, just Google that and, and see some absolutely charming little YouTube videos of possumness. Mm -hmm. But there is also an American Possum Society mm -hmm. that, that has lots of really incredibly valuable information. And possums are poised to become a, a new popular pet in our coming time. They are now licensing licensed possum breeders who are selling baby possums for $300 a piece. Do you really need to pay $300 for no, a possum? No, because you can just go out and get one. They're everywhere and they are easy. They're the easiest animals in the world to tame and raise and keep as pets. And they're wonderful creatures. They're sweet and gentle and nice. And people are think that they are scary or or, or something to be afraid of. And I've had people say, oh, I saw a possum in it, you know, and it tried to attack me. And tried to attack me is an interesting phrase. What does that mean exactly? And what that means is that if you surprise a possum mm -hmm. and it's cornered and it can't, it can't run away, which is, is difficult enough for them anyway. I mean, possums have four gates, amble, ramble, shamble, and scramble. Okay. And none of them are very fast, you mm -hmm. know. I mean, you can catch a wild possum by just coming up and grabbing it by the tail and picking it up. That's all it takes, you know. Uh -huh. But if you encounter a possum and it's, and it's there, its immediate default reaction is to turn around and look at you and kind of tilt its head to the side and lift its, its lips back from, from its teeth and snile at you. It's, it's sort of like a, between a snarl and a smile because they have no cheeks. So they're, when they open their mouth, it goes all the way back to their ears, you know, which is very impressive. And they can open their mouth to a 90 degree gape and they have 52 teeth, which are very sharp and jagged and interesting. So that so looks scary. It looks really scary. But they're just petrified, and they're just going, ah, don't, don't hurt me, don't eat me, don't kill me. And that's what it's all about. That's all it's about. And if you don't, if in, if um, if you're so a predator, people take that as tried to attack, exactly. but it's really their fright reaction. It's their fright reaction. And and if you proceed to this and and continue to be threatening, and they get even more scared, their next thing to do is not to attack; it's to faint. They just lose it. They just go bah. And they faint, and they, um, and they, you know, barf up and crap up whatever's in them, and make a real mess. And most predators will take one look at that and say, "I don't want anything to do with this." That's playing possum. Little, that's where that comes. They're, that's, it's, they're, they're a trickster. In the Native American tradition, they're considered a trickster uh -huh. for this. But it's not a trick. They faint. They lose it. They are so meek and so timid and so gentle that they just don't know what to do. If if a if a dog or something continues to press up to a possum that's smiling, it'll probably nip them because it doesn't know what else to do right. you know and they've got a lot of teeth and yeah. um, but if you don't buy that if you understand possums uh -huh. and that you encounter possum and there it is petrified in the corner going ah, uh -huh. and you just say oh you cute little possum aren't you sweet I don't know. it'll keep looking at you and eventually it'll realize you're not going to hurt it you're not threatening it right. and it will eventually kind of close its mouth and relax and calm and you can kind of gently reach over and sort of pet it you know, and it'll kind of relax 
listen to it and kind of scritchy behind the ears, you know, until it gets all nice and relaxed and cozy and feels safe. And you can just pick it up and we'll put it in your lap and love on it in five minutes. You can tame a wild possum into sitting in your lap and being petted. Now, if you start off with a baby possum, uh -huh. which is extremely easy to get baby possums, they're generally born in April, mm -hmm. and um, all you really got to do is just put out a small no, have a heart trap with cat food in it, and you'll, you'll probably get a baby possum in it, you know uh -huh. I mean? They're just yeah, really Especially easy. in the city, they are especially city animals, too. Right. Mm -hmm. Or they get hit by cars all the time, and some, in, this, in around April or so, if you see a possum hit by a car, and it's fresh, mm -hmm. check it out. It may be a mother who has babies in its pouch. Uh -huh. you know, and you may be able to save save one, you know. Or, what or what do they eat? Well, um, they are omnivores, and they are. The thing about possums that's, that's hard to really quite address is how individual they are. They are each one is a unique individual. They are different colors, different sizes. They they range in color from white to black and everything in between, all in blacks and whites. Mm -hmm. You know, they have patterns in their faces. They have different markings on their ears. Mm. They're they're very variegated, and they also have very distinct personalities as to what they like to eat. Ah. But being omnivores, they're capable of eating a wide variety of stuff. So, you know, meat and fruit and vegetables and bugs and things like that. And you just kind of play with that, you know. You feed them table scraps. It's every like to tell you this. They, you they, mentioned cat food, so that's well, one? Well, they, they like cat food, but I've learned that that isn't actually the best thing for them. Because commercial oh. cat food, as it turns out, which I have, you know, previously fed possums not knowing any better, isn't really the ideal thing. They require a good deal of calcium in their diet because in their natural world they eat um, you know a lot of bugs and, and mice and things if they can catch them and stuff uh -huh. um, which they, they can't really run down things they're not really predators exactly but they're uh -huh. opportunists if they find a nest of baby rats they'll they'll try to eat them oh. or, or you know baby chickens or something uh -huh. they, they'll eat eggs they love eggs uh -huh. so we make omelets for them with, and put in little bits of sausage and uh -huh. cheese Oh. Like cheese generally. Fried chicken is a favorite. Mm -hmm. You know, they love fried chicken. Mm -hmm. They uh, Most of them like watermelon, but they generally like grapes. But, you know, they're idiosyncratic. We, you know, we our present one doesn't like blueberries and blackberries, which we thought she would love, but she loves red grapes, you know, huh. seedless red grapes. So they're very individual, and you can check that out. There's the American Possum Society has a very detailed explanation of how to care for and feed your possum mm -hmm. and they are easily and readily house trained they will use a litter box you don't put cat litter in it you put uh, cedar shavings in it cedar shavings cedar mm -hmm. shavings in a litter box and they will use that they prefer to use that they do not want to mess up their their nest what we made for ours was a great big possum house we call a pacienda that's just a, a big dog kennel that I put a second level in uh -huh. you know a split level thing with uh -huh. nice cozy stuff to curl up in and they make a kind of a cat sleeping bag thing that's kind of a ring with a bag in uh -huh. it and that's just a perfect sleeping thing and when of they're little they're, they're we, we use pouches we use to carry around and we put around our neck we have little for the babies. knitted pouches for the babies and then we have bigger ones as they get bigger and then eventually they graduate into the larger size uh -huh. They, uh, we take ours for a walk every evening, so she and she goes out and in pees and poops on the lawn. Do you have them on a leash? Or? Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. we use a harness, a little cat harness, mm -hmm. and they're big enough to do that with, and then take them out on a mm -hmm. leash. But we keep a litter box handy so mm -hmm. that they can use that in the house, and, mm -hmm. and they're just... They're sweet. They're sweet, gentle little creatures that are very meek and mild and innocent, and, and in a way pathetic because they are not social. You know, mm -hmm. possums have no social life. So once they fall off their mother, they're all by themselves in a lonely, hostile, dangerous world that everything uh -huh. wants to eat them. Mm -hmm. And so if you adopt a baby possum, you become the mommy. And uh -huh. it just loves you. It just adores you. And it will just lie in your lap and gaze up adoringly with these big <laughs> eyes, you know. And you just go, oh, the possum. And it's, they, they, they lower your IQ by about 50 points. You right. Know, a possum, you know, you start talking baby talk and, mm -hmm. and not wanting to get up you know it's just it's hysterical really great now I remember you mentioning something about them because uh, you know they're the only marsupial in America yes yes um, but they also have an interesting very old evolutionary yes. line can yes. you mention that for a moment the American possum has been unchanged for 70 million years that means they were here when the dinosaurs were on the earth and they survived the dinosaurs and when the dinosaurs were all killed off you know, they, they were they were eating dinosaur carcasses, tastes just like chicken, you know? Mm. Probably where they got a taste for chicken, you know? Right. But um, they've been around a long time, and they migrated, um, possums migrated to South America, 
and eventually across when South America and Antarctica and and Australia were all connected, they migrated all the way into Australia where they evolved into all kinds of marsupial stuff. But the North American possum, Virginia didelphus, mm -hmm. is the original model and it is the only marsupial in North America. Mm -hmm. There were quite a few kinds in South America mm -hmm. that, that evolved, some of them into great big saber-toothed tiger possum things, you know. That, wow. That, that evolved out of it, and a hippo possum, mm -hmm. you know, kind of a thing. Well, are, are, the, are the things in Australia now that we we know, like the kangaroo and mm -hmm. such related? Yep, yep, they're all marsupials. They're all, now, marsupials are more different from us than we are from anything else. The possum is, I mean, we are closer related to whales and bats, you know, and cows and horses than we are to possums. This is like oh. an, an alien creature. This is an, you, you might as well be having a prehistoric monster living with you. They are that kind of an ancient, ancient thing. There's wow. no, they're not like anything else. If you think that, I mean, they, they're about the size of a cat and you sort of think of them that way, but they're not. The, you know, they're not like a raccoon or a cat or a, or a weasel or, mm -hmm. or a badger or something, even though they look like it. They're mm -hmm. completely, mm -hmm. a totally different alien creature with a whole different psychology. And, mm -hmm. and primitive stuff, and they just make the sweetest, most adorable pets. So for people interested in a very different kind of pet that's relatively easy to take care of. Very, uh, very easy. They how long, most of how long will your usual possum live for? Well, in the wild, possums tend to live about a year, sometimes two. That is their normal lifespan. They, they, oh. they, if they make it to have their, their a litter mm -hmm. in their life, that's a successful year for them. Uh -huh. But in uh, when they're cared for in captivity and well-fed and protected and, and nothing's killing and eating them, apparently they they can live up to 10 years or so, which is oh. quite remarkable. It's a big gap mm -hmm. between then that. Thing that. So, mm -hmm. you know, you can have a real nice pet for a while that will live, you know, half as long as a cat anyway, mm -hmm. and um, and just and be you utterly... don't have to pay three hundred dollars for them. You don't have to pay three hundred. You can just <laughs> okay. go out and get one. The licensed breeders apparently are getting their breeding stock from laboratories that have been doing research on them, oh. and so they get them from that, and it's a whole licensed thing. And there's some places that have laws that you shouldn't have unlicensed possums, but it's it's ludicrous and stupid because they're not endangered anywhere. They've right. expanded their range everywhere. Where they're considered a nuisance in many places, even though they're not really. They don't cause any trouble. They don't mm -hmm. get into anything. They don't mess the place up. It's not like having a raccoon or a monkey in the house or something. You know? Right. Right. They, they don't. They don't do anything except just, you know, sleep and 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 eat and, and lie in your lap and be petted and loved on. You know. Great. Well, thanks for your insight on, on what would be a really interesting adventure of a, of a new pet for a lot of folks if they want to give it a try. It is. And, and look up the other possum lovers through <laughs> Googling possum societies and M.E. Pearl in particular. Well, there's probably a Facebook page. If there isn't, maybe yes. there will be after someone sees this video. Well, I hope so. All, <laughs> All right. right. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Bye-bye.